Hello guys, today we will talk about action classes in Laravel with a practical example based on a tweet by Nunu Maduro, core team member of Laravel, who tweeted that he uses, for example, delete team action in controller. And that tweet went really popular with a lot of comments and I decided to recreate that example and expand explaining some details of that approach with a lot of tips kind of by the way. So we will talk about action classes, how to create them, how to add validation here, how to check the permission in which layer, also why action classes are beneficial because you can reuse them in for example API controllers, jobs or unit tests. And I will show examples of those and also we will talk about what is the difference difference between action and service at the end of this video. So let's go step by step. A visual example is this, just a CRUD for teams. Team belongs to a user and a user can create a team. For example, my first team, save the team. They have a list and they have a delete button, which is handled by controller destroy method and action is one of the parameters to that controller. So the logic is this, the controller method is pretty short, it's just calls the action class and then redirects back to the index. By the way, did you know that helper to route, it's instead of redirect route, you can do it shorter with to route here. It was released in Laravel 9 from what I remember. Anyway, back to the action. So action class performs the actual, well, action, deleting the team in this case. And inside of that action class, we have team delete and then whatever else you want to perform here. For example, notify someone, update some stats somewhere. So in theory, there should be a few more operations here. And the main thing here is that action is a separate PHP class. It's not a Laravel class. There's no PHP artisan make action. You just create PHP artisan make make class, actions create team or actions delete team, for example, and create a method that you want, for example, handle. This is not a sacred rule. You can do execute, invoke, or whatever you want. But the idea is that action class should have one method to execute. And the action is called from the controller and action class doesn't know about request parameters. Request parameters are handled in the controller by validation and we will get to that in a minute and also eloquent model as a parameter. So in this case, action class and action method is called from the controller, but the logic here is that it could be called from anywhere, from web controller, from API controller, passing user and team, from a job, from a unit test, from wherever. It's kind of like a black box that accepts parameters and may or may not return anything. In this case, it doesn't return anything. Probably in more complex operations, it could throw some exception if something goes wrong. But in my case, I simplified it to just not return anything. The next topic kind of sub question, why don't we create a separate class of action? Why do we just pass a parameter and it automatically works? This is powered by Laravel container, which does that magic in majority of Laravel classes, but mostly I see that used in controllers. So these are the things that are kind of familiar to us. So we are used to route model binding in controller and also form request here. But this is how it works in controller for any PHP class in Laravel. You just type in the class type and then under the hood, Laravel creates an instance of that class. So you don't need to do action equals new delete team like this. This is done by passing the parameter in the method itself. And I also have a separate video explaining that in a bit more details about why we don't need to create class objects. And I will link that video in the description below. So yeah, we don't need to do this. Next question is validation and permission check. Where should it be here? And parts of this video are based on the questions on the original tweet by Nuno. For example, this question, where would you handle authorization type checks in the action policy form request or stuff like that? And I like Nuno's approach form request with a policy. Let me demonstrate. So I have created a policy class with PHP artisan make policy team policy with model as team. And I have three methods of who can view the team, update the team or delete the team. And the condition is the same, whether that team belongs to a specific user. And then in various places of Laravel project, we can use 
user can passing the team model as a parameter. So this is exactly what we do in the team controller in the delete team request. This is not really an often case that we have delete request because we're used to store form request and update form request, right? But form request validation is not only for validating the parameters of the form, but there's also another method called authorize. So in delete team request, we don't need to have rules at all, but we do have authorize method. This user can delete with this team and this team comes from the request. So what that does, if I log out and register with another user, fake filler, and I go to teams and for example, let's change the team controller to return all teams instead of just current users teams. So team all, for example, this will be of course incorrect, but I want to simulate the situation. And for example, I click delete, but not on my own team. I click delete, I click okay. And then authorization is fired because delete team request authorize returns false. So to recap in controller, you call form request class, which calls authorize method, which under the hood uses policy delete method with specific team and logged in user as a parameter. Next, we will discuss why the action is useful because it could be reused elsewhere in other controllers. And this will be partially the answer to Roman here who asked if the action is reused elsewhere. And yes, I've simulated that situation. So for example, in routes web, we have route resource to team controller, which you saw already, but also in routes API, we have a separate API controller, for example, for mobile application or for front end client. And here we have route API resource to team controller, which is a different controller with API V1 namespace with a function destroy that looks almost exactly the same as team controller from the web. So it does the same thing, but returns different response for the web. It makes sense to redirect somewhere for API. It makes sense to return some JSON or in this case for destroy, there's nothing to return. So I just return no content with 204 HTTP status. But look at this delete team is also a parameter here. And it's also called from controller just from a different controller. So if you don't have that separate action class, you would be forced to repeat yourself and do the same code in both controller, which is kind of violating the principle of DRY don't repeat yourself. And if that example of reusability is not enough, let me show you two more. For example, what if that delete team operation would be a part of a bigger job in Laravel? For example, there would be a suspend team, for example, job that would be queuable with more operations before and after. And somewhere in the middle, you have something like this. So you call that job with a team as a parameter to that job. And then you provide action here and you call that action similarly to how you did it in controller just with this team user instead of request user. So this is another great example of that black box. So in this case, we don't have request from the web or from the API. It is a job that would be put in the queue and the queue may be processed later in a minute or even in an hour and it wouldn't know about what was the initial request from the browser or from the API. Another similar example of reusability is provided by Tyler. For example, you have custom artisan command that would call that action class. And final example of reusability I want to show you is unit tests. This is emphasized by Mark here on Twitter that actions are very nice testable units. So the term unit test as opposed to feature tests in Laravel means that the unit is kind of a separate class or separate method that could be called without a web request. So let me demonstrate. In this project, I have created two automated test files. I'm using PEST here, but PHP unit is similar logic, basically a feature test if user can delete their team and cannot delete someone else's team. In here, I call a request of acting as user delete the URL. I'm simulating the form request and then I assert that redirect is correct and database is missing the team. And the other way around, if I'm trying to delete someone else's team, it will be for forbidden and database would still have the team. So this is a feature test. I'm calling a feature and assert check the results. So if we run PHP artisan test, we'll have two past feature tests, but there's also a unit test. We can call that action class separately without form request, without web request, something like this. So in this unit test, what we're testing here is that delete team action as a class, as a method works correctly. Doesn't matter where it's called from web API or artisan command or a job. 
So ideally in the test suite of Laravel, there should be both feature and unit tests for specifically important units, because there is a possibility that action class works, but one of the calling to that action, for example, web would work, but API would have some error and vice versa. In the web or API request, you pass some data which should be valid, but inside of the action, there is some bug that would be caught by unit test. And side note, I know that strictly speaking, unit tests should not touch the database. I've seen that theory, but there's a gray line here. And in this case, I think it's fine to simulate the database scenario and still assert the database. But in my case, the difference between feature and unit test is that here we're calling a feature, the web request, and here we're calling a unit, a class of PHP. And if you want to find out more about testing in Laravel, I have a course on my Laravel daily com, testing for beginners, which also discusses the difference between feature and unit tests in one of the lessons. So I will link that course in the description below. The final topic that I want to discuss here is why using an action and not a service class. And this was a question asked by Daniel here on Nunu's original tweet. And also another person prevail provides the example of service class that they use as service classes. And both are fine. What is the difference? And both action class and service class are just PHP classes. The main difference is in structure of how many methods that class has. The idea of action and even the word action means one action, one method inside of the class. Service means service for whatever is related to that specific object, for example, a team. So alternative approach to that action class for delete team and create team with one method each. So create team also has a handle method. Alternative approach is to have a service. So we can do something like this, PHP artisan make class services team service, which would create a team service empty class. And here we would have a method of create void, for example, and a method of delete or destroy whatever you want to call that delete void, delete the team, something like that. I will not fill all that in, but you get the idea. So team service here with many methods, with all the methods that are related to the teams. And then in the team controller, what you would do is instead of delete team, you would have team service as a parameter, for example, service. And in here you would call instead of action handle service, delete something like this. And of course, user should be passed as well for that to be identical. So you would have service delete here and service create here in the store method of the controller. That's the main kind of architectural difference, one method or multiple methods in that helper class. And I discussed that quite a lot in my another course. The most popular course on Laravel daily is how to structure Laravel 11 projects. And one of the lessons is about service or action. So I will link that course as well in the description below. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show you about action classes in Laravel based on Nunu's example. And also I'm planning to shoot another follow up video based on another tweet by Nunu about how he passes the data to that action class because in this case our example is pretty simple for example create team has validated from form request but there are more options here how do we validate and how do we structure that data for example with describing the parameters of that validated array here in the comment or use DTOs so I'm going to shoot a follow up on that not sure if it's tomorrow or a bit later so subscribe to the channel for that follow up. Do you have any questions or comments? Shoot everything in the comments below and let's discuss this example. I will also put the repository of that example on GitHub and the link will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.